If you think it's hard producing a few hundred prototypes, wait until you try building customer cars in their thousands. So how are the INEOS engineers getting on, gearing up for Grenadier mass production? Welcome to Hamback. This huge factory, previously owned by Mercedes, had almost half a billion euros invested in it a couple of years ago, before Ineos took control last January. Since then, 50 million more has been injected, modifying the plant for Grenadier production. Taking over an existing high-tech facility with a skilled workforce has given the engineers a massive head start. Their focus now is on build quality and production safety both top INEOS priorities. The Grenadier production line starts right here in this brand new state-of-the-art body shop and it's absolutely vast. The size of six football pitches and it's home to 252 robots that can build a complete Grenadier body shell in just six hours. So Eric, yeah. you, I remember us having a, a Zoom conversation a year or so ago when you gave me that tantalising glimpse through the window of your office when you just moved in. You didn't tell me it was this big. Most people when they come here they get surprised because even if, I, if we explain how big it is it's, it's, it's very hard to imagine the amount of equipment that goes in that is required to, uh, to build a, an automotive body. I mean, this is a, a robotic ecosystem, kind of supported by human beings. Why have you decided to build these bodies with robots? As you may recall, we bought the plant from Mercedes, and that's the reason why we have this to start with. So we started off with a plant that was the most modern in, in Europe, and now we have improved on that for, for the Grenadier. So it is state of the art, but I mean, compared to the rest of the motor, manufacturing industry, is this right at the top in terms of tech? This is right at the top. This is the newest body shop in, in Europe right now. Yeah. So when the production's up at full capacity, how many do you pull off to do the more invasive testing, the destructive testing, the ultrasound? Is there, is it, it's not every vehicle, obviously. But what you do is, of course, in the beginning of the process, you make more tests. When you have the stable process, you then define, its quality department defines then how many tests you're going to be doing. Inline testing in the machine is, of course, done on every vehicle coming out. So let's move on to the paint shop. Just talk to me about the paint shop. Again, another brand new state-of-the-art facility. It's as environmentally friendly as it can be. It's a water-based paint shop. Uh, it's it's state-of-the-art electro-coating, state-of-the-art paint process. And uh, what is, I think, uh, specific for this uh, paint shop right now is that the sealant that we're putting on, on the body to ensure the water tightness for wading is of course something that is more advanced than you would find in a regular paint shop. Obviously there was a lot of discussion a year or so ago when you made a decision to, to pull out of the factory in Wales and in Portugal and you decided to come here. Why Hamback? Then the opportunity came up that Mercedes-Benz had a change of strategy and said, look, we've just invested, we want to do something different due to COVID and other areas. I mean, we took a look at the site and it's just a fantastic site. Also within the Mercedes-Benz universe, it, it always has been a high quality site. Uh, excellent team uh, with a good track record of uh, uh, producing vehicles for Mercedes-Benz and it just accelerated our, our capability massively. Uh, and in hindsight, looking back now in the first year, uh, I, I could point to so many things that we would have struggled, I think, significantly. Parts availability being one, training of individuals the other. I think walking in here, I mean, it just kicked up uh, the quality so much um, for the product. Uh, so also tapping into that experience, having that opportunity, having people from the side who manufacture vehicles, 
looking over the Grenadier and giving it just that extra kick. Because when you walk round, my first visit here, I was thinking it would be, you know, you'd be unpacking crates of robots and whatever, to, but it, it actually, it's really, really motoring here. Ever since we've taken over, uh, I think we've been modifying the site. I mean, we inherited a site from Mercedes-Benz, which was already well invested. So for us, it was, I think it was the, the task now to assess what's here, what needs to be modified uh, and adjusted to build the Grenadier. And that's what we've been doing the last year. So what are you actually building in here in terms of Grenadier? We are currently building the, the first prototypes of the Grenadier, the, the so-called PT-01 uh, cars, so 120, 130, that will be produced uh, until the end of February. So what's the point of these production tryout vehicles? Is it just to, to test the actual process of building a Grenadier? What we have to do in this phase is really to commission and to test all the equipment that were installed in the last six to eight months uh, into the plant in all the three shops. Yeah, and now, let's say, project is hitting the reality uh, and, and we have really to see if everything that was planned is working according to spec. We have to check if, let's say, the buildability of the parts is also mature enough yeah, to a serial production, so that's, that's really the phase we are currently in. So it's interesting how you do that from my point of view. So the engineers build the early prototypes and have a vehicle that they can test and make sure the engineering works okay. Do you then sort of take that vehicle and all the, the computer files that go with it and say, right, now we need to take it all apart and literally work out how we put every bolt together exactly. in a factory environment where we're having to produce thousands of them. Exactly, it's, it, it's really how to make the industrialization of a car. So just to give you an idea, let's say on, 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 on the improvement you have to do, we have to check how can we in a plant like this yeah, produce really serial production. Currently the output of the line is one car every four to five hours. And by the end of this year, uh, we should be able to have an output of one car every five minutes. Yeah. So how's it going? Is it, you know, no hitches or are there challenges that have cropped up? Oh, well, we have plenty of challenges um, to overcome. Um, we also um, yeah, need to embrace that and, and look for opportunities in, from within there. A lot of it is proving the logistics, um, proving the, the individual parts and, and having them ready to, the, to a high standard. And, and I'm confident that we found a lot over the last couple of months. We are still finding obviously things now how they come together on the line. Confirming what we've seen and adjusting along the way is, is the game in town now. The transformation of this vast facility into a bespoke Grenadier production line in under a year is a truly remarkable feat, but the job is not done yet because at the moment they're only producing about five of these latest prototypes each day. But by the time they're building Grenadiers for you and me, the aim in a few months time is to be able to drive one of these off this production line every five minutes.